السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا حبيبنا وشفيعنا قائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين نستغفرك يا الله ونتوب إليك يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم Today inshallah we will talk about hadith al-shafa'a the uh, hadith of intercession and uh, that's hadith number 36 uh, Allah subhanahu uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, as we mentioned earlier, has given, uh, 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 sent the wahi with some of the uh, uh, ideas to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they were a hadith qudusi. It's not Quran, it's hadith qudusi. So this is, inshallah, the, uh, the hadith of intercession and عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يجتمع المؤمنون يوم القيامة فيقولون and since this is a, a longer hadith I'm going to read it all in Arabic and then I will go on Arabic English inshallah to uh, talk about it in English but first, I will read the whole thing in Arab, inshallah. يجتمع المؤمنون يوم القيامة فيقولون لو استشفعنا إلى ربنا فيأتون آدم فيقولون أنت أبو الناس خلقك الله بيده وأسجد لك ملائكته وعلمك, وعلمك أسماء كل شيء فاشفع لنا عند ربك حتى يريحنا من مكاننا هذا فيقول لست هناكم ويذكر ذنبه فيستحي تنوحا فإنه أول, أول رسول بعثه الله إلى الأرض فيأتونه فيقول لست هناكم ويذكر سؤاله ربه ما ليس له به علم فيستحي فيقول فيقول اتوا خليل خليل الرحمن فياتونه فيقول لست هناكم لست هناكم اتوا موسى عبد عبدا كلمه الله واعطاه التوراه فياتونه فيقول لست هناكم ويذكر قتل النفس بغير نفس فيستحي من ربه فيقول فيقول اتوا عيسى عبدا لله ورسوله وكلمة, وكلمة الله وروحة فيقول لست هناكم لست هناكم اتوا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبدا غفر الله له ما تقدم من ذنبه وما تأخر فيأتونني فأنطلق حتى أستأذن على ربي فيؤذن لي فإذا رأيت ربي وقعت ساجدا فيدعوني ما شاء الله ثم يقال ثم يقال ارفع رأسك وسل تعطه وقل يسمع واشفع تشفع أرفع رأسي فأحمده بتحميد يعلمنيه ثم أشفع فيحد لي حدا ثم أشفع ثم أشفع فيحد لي حدا فأدخلهم الجنة ثم أعود إليه فإذا رأيت ربي مثله لم ثم أشفع فيحد لي حدا فأدخله فأدخلهم الجنة ثم أعود الثالثة ثم أعود الرابعة فأقول ما بقي في النار إلا من حبسه القرآن ووجب, ووجب عليه الخلود 
وفي رواية أخرى قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يخرج من النار من قال لا إله إلا الله وكان في قلبه من الخير ما يزن شعيره ثم يخرج من النار من قال لا إله إلا الله وكان في قلبه من الخير ما يزن بره ثم يخرج من النار من قال لا إله إلا الله وكان في قلبه ما يزن من الخير ذرة سبحان الله On the day of judgment Allah سبحانه وتعالى will get people this is after they were all resurrected all people will stand and wait and the sun will come closer and closer and closer and closer and people will start wetting sweating people people are scared people are so afraid what will happen to them people will be sweating some of them the the sweat will cover them all until it's their, their ears some of them until until their bellies some of them until their, their knees some of them until just very very little on their feet so each and every one will be sweating as per their deeds they are all waiting on that day and they are waiting and waiting and it will be a very long wait until some of them would say ya allah just just even if you want to get us to hellfire but just let this end so people will start to 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 think and they will they will they will gather all they will be an assembly and they will say let's ask somebody to intercede for us so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in this hadith on the day of resurrection the believers will will assemble so there will be groups and they will say let's ask somebody to intercede for us but who who are who is this person so they will say they will they will say let's go to adam so they all went to him adam and they say to him you are the father of all people allah subhanahu has his own and he ordered uh, he, he ordered the angels to prostrate to you and he ordered you he, he taught you the names of all things so please intercede for us with your lord so they ask sayyidna adam to intercede for them so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may relieve them from this place of waiting. And Adam alayhi salam would say, I cannot. I am not fit for this. I cannot uh, have intercession for you. And he will remember his sin. And he will feel ashamed, therefore, that he ate from the tree. He will say, I cannot do it. Go to Nuh alayhi salam. For he, he was the first apostle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to inhabitants of the earth. Then they will all go to Nuh to Nuh alayhi salam. I'm sorry, I, uh, I think. So Adam alayhi salam will tell them, go to Nuh alayhi salam, the first of the apostles. 
and Allah has sent him to all inhabitants of the earth. So they will go to they will all go to Nuh alayhi salam, and they they, uh, they will ask him for intercession, and uh, he will say, "I am not fit for this. I cannot do it. I cannot do intercession for you." And he will remember his appeal to his Lord to do what he had no knowledge of. Then he will feel ashamed because of that. And he will say, I cannot do it. Go to Khalil al-Rahman, go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. So, so they go and he says, I cannot do it. Go to Musa. Go to Moses. Moses is the slave whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken directly and, uh, and, give, uh, and has given him the Torah. So go to him. Go to him. You might find your, uh, your whatever you are asking with him. He will do the intercession for you. So they rush to Musa alayhi salam. And when they go to him, they, they will uh, they will say, Ya Rasulullah, in, have intercession for us. And the same response they will ever have. He will say, I am not fit for it. Less to laha, less to laha. For this, uh, for, for this, I, I cannot do this. I'm not the one for it, for this. I'm not the one who, who can do this. So he will, he mentions here the uh, the killing of a person, uh, uh, of the the person who he killed uh, for, uh, uh, and that person was not a killer, so he spared a, a life. And he says, "I cannot do it. I feel ashamed." But go to Jesus, Allah slaves, and so so. Uh, uh, Jesus can uh, he's Allah's word he's a spirit coming from him so go to him he, he might be able to help you so when they go to Jesus alayhi salam, he would say I'm not fit for this I cannot do it and we know that in the, in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, said to Jesus alayhi salam, and have you told people to to take me and my my uh, uh, my mother as gods? And he will say, I haven't said that, said that. You know what's in my heart, and I don't know what's what you hide. I am only your slave. You order me, and I do it. My people did 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 what they did. They took me as a lord. They took me as I never, I never told them to do that. So again, he feels ashamed, and he tells them, "Go to Muhammad, the slave of Allah, whose past and future sins were forgiven by Allah." So they will come to me, and this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is narrating. They will come to me. And I will proceed. I will proceed until I will ask for uh, a permission to meet Allah. And I will be given this permission. I will be given this permission. When I see my Lord, this is what Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says. When I see Allah, I fall down in prostration. And I will have a long sujood, a long prostration, in which I will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with forms that Allah has taught me and I never knew. So you want something? Go to prayer, make sujood and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what you want. So, I will fall down in prostration. 
and he will let me remain in that state as long as he wishes and then I will be at rest Muhammad raise your head ask and your, your request will be granted and what will Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ask for Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. That will be his concern. So, so when he is asked this, so Allah will go on and he will say, your saying will be listened to. Intercede and your intercession will be accepted. At that time, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, I will raise my head and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with invocation also that he would teach me. And then I will ask. And then I will ask for intercession for my ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fix a limit for me to intercede for. You can do this and this, this and this number whom I will admit into, into paradise. So out of the, those people, we're standing. Some of them will go by the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to paradise. Then I will come back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I will come again to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And when I see my Lord, the same thing will happen to me. I I will intercede. I will make this sujood. I will intercede and I will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for intercession. And Allah will fix a number for me to intercede. Whom I will let into paradise. And then I will come back for the third time. And then I will come back for the fourth time. And will say, none, none remains in hell but those whom the Quran has inspired, has imprisoned. The, the, the people who will be in, in the hellfire are those that the Quran has imprisoned in hellfire. And who ha those ha have uh, also the, those who have been destined to be an eternal stay in to to have an internal stay in hellfire so who who is going to stay in hellfire those two types of people the two types the first type is the type that Quran has imprisoned in hellfire and those who have been uh, destined to be in hellfire. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say also, he, he goes on in another narration, he will say, out of hellfire, there will be out of hellfire each and every person who says la ilaha illallah and there in his heart there is goodness weighing a barely cone imagine what's the weight of that barely cone take one and, and see what what's it so anyone who says la ilaha illallah there's no god but allah and there is goodness in his heart, that person will be will get out of hellfire because of the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad. And again, he will not stop there. He will also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for intercession for the people. And he says, There shall come out of hellfire anyone. Who, who said, La ilaha illallah, 
and who has in his heart goodness weighing a grain of wheat. Imagine the, the weight, the weight of a grain of wheat. If someone says, La ilaha illallah, and he has that grain of wheat, goodness in his heart, he will be out of hellfire because of the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there shall come out of hellfire he who has, he who, ha, who says there is no God but Allah and who has in his heart a goodness that weighs an atom. So imagine, imagine the mercy of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are talking now about just one aspect of his mercy, which is the intercession to his ummah, which is the mercy that he will show, he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for the, for, to save his ummah. This is out of his mercy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the day of judgment, all the prophets will be on their pul pulpits of nur, except the pulpit of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It will be empty. He would be going and coming and going and coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask, to ask him to save his ummah. Ya Habibi, Ya Rasulullah. Some people will say, oh, we have sinned, we have big sins. Yani, the, the, we cannot, we don't know how we will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Shafa'ati li ahli al-kaba'ir ibn ummati. My intercession is for those who has committed the big sins of my nation. So those people will be, will, will, will be desperate. Are we going to be forgiven? Are we going to be forgiven? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving them bushra is giving them glad tidings and good news that he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for intercession for his ummah. No one will be able, none of the prophets will have intercession except Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will say, Ana laha, Ana laha, I am for it. I am for it. I am going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am going to do this long sajda. I'm going to ask him. I'm going. I know that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give me intercession for my ummah. So this, this intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive his nation is a blessing. And it is said, Alhamdulillah ala ni'mati al-Islam wa kafa biha min ni'am. Alhamdulillah for being a Muslim. And this suffers us of all the blessings. Because this is the real blessing that will help us on the day of judgment to be of the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not leave his ummah on the day of judgment. He will not leave them. He, he did his best in, in life just to convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as accurate as possible and to he will continue with his mission until the day of judgment where he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive his ummah, to have intercession for his ummah. And if we want to talk about this topic, it will take us 
hours and hours and hours and hours. And we are giving just highlights, very, very few points about the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when the when the MBA will know that uh, what happens to the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad on the Day of Judgment, uh, there will be light coming out of under each hair of the body of the people, there will be light coming out. So everyone would wish that they are of the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even the, the prophets would wish that they are of the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So as we mentioned, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has done his best during his life to, to tell people, to advise people, to show them the, the way that would lead to hellfire and that would lead to, to Jannah to paradise. And he showed his ummah that there are hundreds of steps in, in paradise on the day of judgment for his ummah. And he said, no one لن يدخل أحدكم الجنة بعمله. None of the creatures would get into paradise as per their actions. They said, not even you, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Wala ana. Illa ayyatagamadani Allah bi rahmatih. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have his mercy upon me. So we are of the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to follow. His teachings, we have to follow his, uh, uh, all, all, whatever he ordered us to. We have to follow his life. We have to follow the manner, his manners. We have to follow his uh, 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 way of treating people. We have to follow, we have to follow him in everything, in all aspects of our life. And he has done his best to show us the right way. And he has done his best to warn us about whatever in this dunya, whatever turbulences, whatever fitan in this dunya that would deviate us. And I will continue now with one of the narrations of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he had warned his people uh, uh, and told his people about it's the fitna of a dajjal I'm going to mention a hadith now and we will talk about it about the hadith and translate it so <clears throat> in this life there's so many tests so many turbulences so many afflictions that each and every one of us face and we talked about that last time. And we talked about that, what we, what we should do at the very first moment of having the affliction, of having the test. So when a true believer, a, a true friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may face any trial, his first re response would be, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. الحمد لله هذه المصيبة لم تكن في ديني إن لله وإن إليه راجعون We belong to Allah and we are returning to him We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I was not inflected in my faith Someone to get out of this faith is dooming get out of this faith is uh, living the rest of the, the next life in hellfire. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has warned us uh, against the things 
about the things that cause a person to lose faith, to lose faith. He mentioned so many things. One of these issues, which will happen at the end of times. So, uh, the, so there are things that will happen during our lives and things that will happen if we are at the time, at the end of time. So what will happen? And I'm going to talk about that. But <clears throat> before we go there, we have to read the words of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu the narrations of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu He clarifies everything for our life. He set a full program for us that if we follow, then we will be winners in the day after. So now, one of these issues that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has talked about is the fitna of the dajjal Rubi an Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anahu qal innahu lam takun fitnatun fil ardi mundur dara Allahu zurriyata adam a'zama min fitnati al-dajjal wa inna Allah lam yab'ath nabiyan illa hadra ummatahu al-dajjal so it was narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had addressed us. And most of his speech had to do with telling us about a Dajjal. He warned, he warned about him. And among the things he said was there will not be any tribulation on earth since the time Allah created the offspring of Adam, that will be greater than the tribulation of a Dajjal. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَبْعَثْ نَبِيًّا إِلَّا حَذَّرَ أُمَّتَهُ الدَّجَّالِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sent any prophet, but he warned his nation about a Dajjal. وَأَنَا آخِرُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَأَنْتُمْ آخِرُ الْأُمَمْ I am the last of the prophets, and you are the last of the nations. He will undoubtedly appear amongst, among you. If he appears while I am among you, I will contend with him on behalf of every Muslim. وَإِنْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَعْدِي فَكُلُّ مْرِئٍ حَجِيجُ نَفْسِهِ وَاللَّهُ خَلِيفَتِي عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ And if he appears while I am not among you, then each man must fend for himself. And Allah will take care of every Muslim on my behalf. This is the real mercy. And we mentioned earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created mercy, he divided it into 100 portions. He descended down to earth one portion, portion only, 1%, with which you find the mom taking care of her uh, babies, the uh, uh, mama animal will take care of her babies, uh, people will have mercy among each other. This is all under one portion of the mercy. But on the day of judgment, we will see the 99% of the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved there so that to have mercy on his people, on, the, on his creation. وَإِنَّهُ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ, مِنْ خَلَّهُ بَيْنَ الشَّامِ وَالْعِرَاقِ فَيَعِيثُ يَمِينًا وَيَعِيثُ شِمَالًا so he will emerge from al khalla and this is a place between Sham and Iraq, and will wreck havoc right and left.
Allah remains steadfast. I will describe him to you in a manner in which none of the prophets has described him before me. He will start by saying, I am a prophet and there is no prophet after me. So he will then for the second time he will say, I am your Lord. But see Muhammad. Muhammad is clarifying. You will not see your Lord until you die. He is one-eyed and your Lord is not one-eyed. So... Uh, Written between his eyes is kafir. Ka -fa -ka the letter kaf, the letter fa, the, let the letter ra, ra, okay, which form the word kufr. So every believer will read it, whether he is literate or illiterate. Part of his fitna will be that he will have within him paradise and hell. فَنَارُهُ جَنَّةُ وَجَنَّتُهُ نَارُ So part of his fitna will be that he will have with him paradise and hell. But his hell will be a paradise and his paradise will be a hell. فَمَنِ بُتُلِيَ بِنَارِهِ فَلْيَسْتَغِثْ بِاللَّهِ وَلْيَقْرَأْ فَوَاتِحَ الْكَهْفِ فَتَكُونُ عَلَيْهِ بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا كَمَا كَانَتْ النَّارُ عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ So, whoever is tested with his fire, the Muslim who reads this kufr, kafir, on his uh, uh, front head, he will seek help of Allah and he recites the first verses of Surah Al-Kahf. And it is said it's the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf. Then it will be cool and safe for him as the fire was for Ibrahim. So if he, he tortured anyone with his fire, then that person can read the first 10 ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf and he will be saved from his fire. And this is why it is recommended for each and every Muslim and uh, 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 male and female to memorize the first 10 ayahs of Surah Al-Kahf to be saved from Ad dajjal And part of his fitna, وَمِن فِتْنَتِهِ أَنْ يَقُولَ لِأَعْرَابِي أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ بَعَثْتُ لَكَ أُمَّكَ وَأَبَاكَ تَشْهَدُ أَنِّي رَبُّ so part of his fitna will be that he will say to a Bedouin, what do you think if I resurrect your father and mother for you? So he will say to a man, what do you think if I resurrect your father and mother to you? Will you bear witness that I am your Lord? And he will say, yes. Then two devils will appear to him in the form of his father and mother and will say, oh, my son, follow him. He is your Lord. So this is of his fitna. وَإِنَّ مِنْ فِتْنَتِهِ أَنْ يُسَلِّطَ يُسَلِّطَ عَلَى نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ فَيَقْتُلَهَا وَيَنْشُرَهَا بِالْمِنْشَارِ حَتَّى يُلْقَى شِقَّيْنِ ثُمَّ يَقُولُ انْظُرُوا إِلَى عَبْدِي هَذَا فَإِنِّي أَبْعَثُهُ الْآنَ ثُمَّ يَزْعُمُ أَنَّ لَهُ رَبًّا غَيْرِي so in part of his fitna will be that he will uh, overpower a single soul and kill him. Then he will cut him in uh, with a saw until he falls in two pieces. And then he will say, look at this slave of mine. I will resurrect him now. Then he will claim, he will claim that he has a Lord other than me.
فيبعثه الله ويقول له ويقول له الخبيث من ربك فيقول ربي الله وأنت عدو الله أنت الدجال والله ما كنت أش... بعد أشد بصيرة بك مني اليوم so, الله سبحانه وتعالى will resurrect him and the evil one the Dajjal will say to him who is your lord and he will say this person whom he killed Allah is my lord and you are the enemy of Allah you are the Dajjal by Allah, Allah I have never had more insight about you than I have today وإن من فتنته أن يأمر السماء أن تمطر فتمطر Part of his fitna will be that he will command the sky to rain and it will rain. وَيَأْمُرُ الْأَرْضَ أَنْ تُنْبِتْ فَتُنْبِتْ And he will command the earth to bring forth vegetation and it will do so. So he will, he will do, he will give orders and everything he will say will happen. So this, he will have so many fitness, so many fitness. Uh, until he stops by Mecca and Medina. He tries to enter Mecca and Medina, but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow him. He will be met by angels with unshe unsheathed swords until he, will, until he will stop at the Red Hill at the end of Marshah. So Medina after that will be shaken with its people three times. So, so, uh, so there will be three shakes, three big quakes and people uh, no hypocrite, male or female, will be left in Medina. All of them will go out to him. And thus, it will be, Medina will be cleansed of impurity. So, فتنفي الخبث منها كما ينفي الكير خبث الحديد ويدعى ذلك اليوم يوم الخلاص. So Medina will be cleansed of impurity just as the billows, uh, uh, billows uh, of the, uh, uh, that, that cleanses the iron of dross. So that day will be called the day of deliverance. And the story of Atashar goes on and on until uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Sayyidina Isa and Sayyidina Isa will kill Atashar. Subhanallah. So, uh, going back to the first hadith, we see how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his ummah. Now, if we think, if Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to have all of that for us in the day of judgment, what, sh what, should, we, what, what should we do to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How should we have a strong relation with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu How should our heart be connected to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? When he Sallallahu uh, Alaihi uh, Wasallam was giving the khutbas, he was urging people to have taqwa, remembrance of Allah. He, he wanted people to, to know that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is seeing them even though they do not see him but he is overwatching and he points sallallahu alaihi wasallam to his blessed heart and he says at huna piety is here and he points to his heart so if we want to have piety then we should connect our heart to his heart 
صلى الله عليه وسلم and the easiest way is to send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and scholars say the least of the uh, of the ziyada is 300 so the least يعني, uh, number you can do is 300 salawat Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sallim. Try to do 300 in the morning, 300 in the evening. If you have any problem, if you have any affliction, if you have anything, just do this salawat with the niyyah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help, will uh, relieve you from any, from, from this affliction that you're having. And... It has been tried and so many people feel the blessings of salawat. It changed the lives of, of people. And above all, we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to for for the intercession of, of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that we will be saved in this dunya and in the day after. The intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to be to follow the footsteps of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have always to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on the right track, to, to keep us on the way that we would follow the, the uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so that we will receive his light into our heart, this light that will enlighten the darkness that uh, is in this dunya, which comes... Um, uh, as fitan, as tests, as trials uh, that surround surround us all. وصلي اللهم على سيدنا محمد. And until we meet again next week, inshallah, I would leave you by sending your and my best salam and salawat to our beloved Prophet Sayyidna Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.